Jeff, you recently did a podcast for the Daily Evolver about Jordan Peterson. And I was really struck by, of all of the critiques that I've seen, and I've done a couple of documentaries about Peterson now, so I've been sort of studying the phenomenon fairly, fairly closely. And a lot of the critiques that I've seen have come from quite a, they seem a little bit unfair or a little bit shrill or a bit reactive. And I wondered a, a couple of things, and, and your critique actually seemed very, um, very generous. It seemed to be coming from a, a, a place of yes and with Peterson, rather than a kind of objection or, or a feeling of um, reactivity towards Peterson. And I wonder, I've got a couple of questions. What, one is, why do you think he creates that kind of reactivity? And why did your critique not have that reactivity? Hmm. Um, well, I think he creates that kind of reactivity because um, most people are monoperspectival. And, you know, just to put a little bit of integral theory on the table, there's basically three worldviews that are online in the developed world right now that are in contention. The traditionalist worldview, which is you know, more ethnocentric, religious, conservative, so forth. The modernist worldview, which is secular and sort of the business people, the academic, whatever. And the postmodern, which is more civil rights and you know, rehabilitating the people who have been left behind and sensitivity and all of that sort of thing. So these all, every one of them thinks that they're right. And every one of them is at this stage of the game, because we have uh, just in terms of the development of cultures, and, and I'm talking the developed world, we've polarized. So we really know which side of the street we're on, you know. So you have a guy like Jordan Peterson come along and he's actually has a facility at all of these stages. And every, you know, nobody knows where to put him. Hmm. And so if he has a conservative a view, or if he comes where he's, where he's defending religion or traditional sex roles or things like, you know, self-discipline and humility, and uh, then people think he's in that box of the, you know, crazy religious conservative. And, you know, the, we're, you know, we're, the, the, we're off and running. Mm -hmm. So that, so, to appreciate Jordan Peterson, you also have to be somewhat monoperspectival. And when I talk about there being three stages online, traditional, modern, and postmodern, we would also posit, this is the integral thing, that there's a next stage online called integral, which is an integration of the best of what all of the three previous stages have to offer. Okay, so it has the capacity to hold all three of those stages. And Jordan Peterson has that capacity. And that's why he's hit such a nerve and, 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 and has been so thrilling. Uh, and also, um, in, in terms of where he... Well, maybe I'll stop there and, um, and see. So would you, would you say from your perspective, he is an integral thinker? Yes, I would. He is able to th definitely think integrally. He has integral cognition, as we would say. Uh, his, um, his heart, in a way, is in traditionalism, in my opinion, uh, in a way that I think keeps him a little stuck there, honestly. Uh, but I don't care, because what he's doing is he is helping this whole strata of people who have never had traditionalism well installed. Okay, maybe they had postmodern parents, maybe they had read pre-modern parents, maybe they didn't have any parents, but they didn't get the, the, the strata of traditionalism, which is where you're taught to sit down and shut up, where you uh, have to be obedient, where you think that there, there's, you see the sort of higher, natural hierarchies at least, um, uh, where you're taught to be proud of your country, to have humility, all of that stuff. And, and, I, guess, and I guess the deeper story of that is that your culture has value, that there that is a revolutionary story that has been played out through, through your culture that you don't fully understand. You should have some kind of respect for that. Absolutely. 
Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. So, and, that's, and that's the part that's ethnocentric, uh, but, and, and really difficult to, for people who are at the postmodern stage to have any appreciation for that. They just see it as racist. But so that's the integral move is to see what is it about Britishness? What is it about uh, Persianness? Chineseness, Americanness. What is it that's so precious? You can just feel it ringing through the land. You know, that's, that's important. We want to bring that online. And, uh, and you've got to get through green to do that. You've got to get through post-modernity to do that. And it ain't easy. Yeah. Just some, some, uh, an interesting tension that kind of uh, you talked about on your podcast is that, you know, Peterson has been asked a few times, and I think Jonathan Rousen also kind of asked him around it, is, okay, so what elements of postmodernism do we take forward? And his response was, was sort of kind of none. This is right. you know, ideological possession. <laughs> and and I, I find that a very interesting point because I, I think from a lot of my kind of progressive or green friends, they, um, that's the main sticking point with them, I think. It's that no, but there, and I would agree to you know to a degree where it's like yeah there are some very valuable things to take through so what are your thoughts on his kind of stance on that of like no you you throw it you throw that baby out with the bathwater yeah i think that's the part that is the the real sticking part of him really moving into a, a real integral embrace you know a real you know where where his heart's more at the integral stage instead of just his head uh yeah he sees um i think you know Maybe he has been, as a lot of us have been, who have been in graduate school recently, you know, sort of traumatized by the whole thing, especially if you're a white guy, uh, you know, uh, that there is a, there's absolutely a, a new kind of hierarchy where the victim is on top and, you know, that, and that's just as oppressive. There's a lot of what we would say the red or pre-modern sort of warrior, the fighting stance that is the green is infected with, you know, and all of that's true. And, and I'm glad that Jordan Peterson is fighting that battle. But um, when he um, talks about, you know, sensitivity, he refuses to talk to anybody who would talk about white privilege. Uh, you know, that's, that's sort of ideological, if you ask me. And, uh, and, 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 and so he sees that whole sort of move towards sensitivity um, that, and, and femininity. I also think that he um, does a lot of unnecessary sort of sorting out of masculine and feminine qualities to men and women, you know, in a way that feels that the perfect world for Jordan Peterson would be some sort of a better, more improved stage right at the traditional and modern stage of development. You know, mm -hmm. a really good version of that would be his perfect world. And that's, you know, I think that actually, you know, gender fluidity and a lot of these things are actually harbingers of what's to come, you know. Uh, and and, and, and is, do people go overboard with it? Yeah, join the club. This is humanity. We always do. But we're also staking out new territory that will allow, ultimately, the full range of human capacities from the ma masculine pole to the feminine pole. Uh, and they're there. Those masculine and feminine poles are there, and they're juicy, and we, wanna, we don't want to blend them. We don't want to homogenize them, which is what post-modernity tries to do. So we see that they're separate, but we also say that they're, they're available to everybody regardless of biological sex. Now, people are gonna sort out the way they sort out and people are gonna have what preferences they have, but the, the, the whole landscape's available. When we talk about postmodernism, there's, there's a lot of terms that seem that they could get kind of conflated here because Peterson certainly has a, a real dislike of certain aspects of postmodernity. And Wilbur also talks about this idea of the aperspectival madness, that hidden within postmodernism is, a, is a, a worldview that doesn't really make any sense. And I guess Peterson would call it, it's not a playable game. The, the idea that everything is equally valid and nothing is true 
is not something that you can actually live out in your life. So it, and I wonder when, when some integral thinkers in particular sort of say, well, Peterson is, is very anti-green. They seem like his real vitriol seems to be aimed, at least from my perspective, towards that, that a perspectival madness, the, the idea that there are no truths, yeah. rather than the things that have come out of, of green, which you might talk of civil rights and, um, the, yeah, the, the, the kind of the, the green civil rights wave. Right. Yeah, the positive, the, the unqualified positive of green, of postmodernity. No, it's true. And, and I think he does um, uh, really focus on that, you know, a perspectival madness, the, the, the idea that there is no truth. And he points out that uh, where that leads, and this is, again, another sort of developmental thing, mistake, or this, I would add this to the, the, the mix, is that in 2018 developed world, this is not going to lead to the gulag. Okay, so, you know, he gets all worked up uh, about where this sort of a perspectival thing can lead and points out to the, the, you know, the history of the 20th century. Well, part of the history of the 20th century is that we have, at least in the developed world, well, the whole world, actually, but in the developed world, we've moved to a center of gravity of modernity where, um, you know, it's just we're pacified. You know, that, that's not a real threat anymore. And I just would, you know, point that out. And, uh, you know, and I think that's another s a small critique that I would have, but, but it, 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 it's, it's part of what um, makes, you know, I think one of the moves of integral is that we can fight the same battles that we fought all along, but we do it without demonizing our opponents. And we do it without hating them. And we do it with a certain love and, 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 and lightness to our heart that I don't quite recognize in Jordan Peterson. Yeah, I think this is, this is a really good point because when he talks about that there is this, this worldview that has so many people, he talks about the kind of the value of ideas and that post-modernity is a pernicious ideology and it has people in their grip you would imagine that the, the logical next step would be to have some empathy for these people. Yes. Like if, if people have been given ideas that are not their own and they're following ideas that are not their own, surely the, the thing to do is to hold our hands out and say, have some empathy for the fact that they've been misled rather than this, this, this really strong attack on them, which I, I get a lot of the time from Peterson. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's valid and well said. And, and also to appreciate the, the actual positive nature of that radical deconstruction. Yeah. You know, part of what that's all about is deconstructing these grand narratives of history, whether it's the, you know, everything's going to be great once everybody accepts Jesus as their personal savior. Okay, so that's the grand narrative of traditionalists. Of, of modernists, everything's going to be great once everybody becomes rational. Okay, that proved to be wrong. You know, so postmodernity comes in and says, okay, fuck all of your grand narratives. You know, all of your tribal shit, all of your religion, all of your ideas of truth. And there is something that is just necessary about that cleansing even though it leaves you nuts and depressed and useless, uh, there is that is a stage on the path that you want to get through as quickly as possible. And a lot of people are stuck there. But there is something beyond that. And, and so that brings on a respect for that in a way mm. that I don't get from Peterson. It's an interesting thing because uh, Francois Lyotard, one of the kind of fathers of postmodernism, said at one point that all this deconstruction, if it's not tempered by the sublime, this point where there is absolute meaning, which is almost like your North Star, it, if you have that point, the deconstruction can be incredibly productive. It's, you know, for, for me, from my background, it's, it's a psychedelic 
kind of experience. You know, everything that was certain becomes relational, etc. But he made a point of that very early on in this intellectual endeavor to say, without the sublime, the postmodern will lead to madness. And I, I, what's interesting for me watching Peterson is a big part of what he's reviving is the sublime in some sense through the unconscious Hallelujah. Christianity. Yeah. Yes, indeed he is. And, and I love, he's a beautiful transmitter of the sublime. Mm. Beautiful transmitter. I mean, I've seen things that have given me chills. When he talks about whether or not you fucking make your bed has cosmic consequences. Mm. I agree, actually. And, and to actually get, that's cosmocentric. You know, we talk about moving from ethnocentric to world-centric, you know, to cosmocentric. In, 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 in integral, we, where we start, you know, getting in touch with the actual animating energetics of the cosmos, you know. And there's a new re-enchantment of the world that comes online at that point because we actually do realize that, that there's a new creation story that is you know, delivered to us by science. It's not, we, we don't have to bypass science. Science shows us that something came out of nothing 13.8 billion years ago and has complexified into us. Oh. Now, there's a spiritual path in there somewhere, and we don't have to get, you know, all stuck. I mean, we could see the, our religious traditions, our, you know, pre-modern Christianity, all of them, as beautiful you know, art forms, spiritual art forms, full of beautiful practices for this realization that we are evolving creatures in an evolving cosmos. And we're, we've come from somewhere, we're going from somewhere. And the, you know, for me, the only way any of it makes sense is if there is some continuity between lifetimes. You know, you don't have to believe that, but I'm not sure I believe that, but you know, it, 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 we could play with that because we could actually see it. And science shows it to us. My, just sort of going back a little bit to the idea of post-modernity as sort of this cleansing and then we reconstruct afterwards. I, I hear a lot of people talking, talking like that in terms of that's the process we're going through. But I guess what I really got an appreciation of listening to Peterson is there are some things we cannot erase that there is a biological lived reality. There are certain archetypal structures that, that are just pre-existing because of the way that, that we exist as biological creatures that, that actually post-modernity cannot erase. And that this is something that I'm sort of struggling with a little bit because, yeah, there's a... There's a, there's a well, well post-modernity doesn't erase it. It thinks it does. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's a distinction I would make. Uh, you know, at Integral, we were lot, realize what you're saying is true, is that, wait, wait a minute. Mm. No, th there are things that are actually true. That, you know, the, you know, boiling point of water, the, 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 the you know, whatever. It, there, there, is, there are actual true things. And um, uh, so then we sort of, uh, you know, correct for the excesses of, you know, extreme deconstruction. Yeah, and that. I think Peterson's phrase was that our experience of the world is parameterized by our biological heritage and by our embodied nature. And that's something as well. I mean, I've mentioned it before. The idea of a playable game is a really clever idea. It's like, yeah, you can say you can, you can play the postmodern game as much as you want, but, and say that all, all possibilities are equally valid. Okay. Go and try and live that out in your life and see what happens. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's why, you know, that, uh, that uh, philosophy or that worldview exists in academia because you actually don't have to go out and do anything but, but you know, talk about it. In the real world, people are disabused of that pretty quickly. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, I get the problem. And, you know, I, I think that Peterson is doing God's work in in you know confronting that as beautifully as he is yeah and for me i mean i've i've done quite a lot of kind of inner work and um been part of i guess spiritual communities for quite a long time and what i really got from peterson was a real sense of the a kind of reinvention of the christian tradition and 
the kind of post-Christianity that integrates this incredible intellectual and spiritual tradition in a way that makes it intelligible to, to me and to, I'm sure to many other people. I mean, I was raised a Christian. And then I started reading Ayn Rand. And then I went into atheism. You know, then I moved to Boulder. And, you know, I became all postmodern. Uh, but, uh, but part of my continued growth is turning and re-embracing the, the spiritual truths of Christianity, you know, that are, are, are given to us through Christianity and no other place. You know, I'd say the same for Buddhism. That's the other religion I've deeply practiced. Uh, and I can't imagine my life without both God and emptiness. Hmm. But, you, you know, you can't get a Christian or a Buddhist to, you know, go to the other pole. But I love both of those poles. I love both of those things. And I feel seen and loved by God in a way that I never imagined in my early 20s that I would. Hmm. You know. And, and I'm so glad that Jordan Peterson is you know, re-enchanting this, you know, disenchanted world of modernity for people. Yeah. God, I mean, yeah. you know, here we are, we're, you know, no free will and, you know, just accidents of what matter. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, it's very depressing, very disheart disheartening for people. And so he's, again, literally doing God's work. Yeah, I think um, my my friend Andrew Sweeney said that he's one of the few people in the world that seems to be on fire with the Holy Spirit. Ah, uh, yeah, mm. right on. Which is a, yeah, it's it's so true. There is something very, yeah, yeah I've, I've said it before, he has a very performative aspect to what he's doing. But when you look at his philosophy, he seems very aligned with it. He talks about the Logos. And the idea that you incarnate the Logos more in your own life. And by doing so, you become more embodied and you become more present. And, and he is a living example of that, which is something I've, I've, I've never put those two things together before quite so clearly as mm -hmm. when I was listening to him. Ah, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. It's, a, it's actually, it's interesting if you look at uh, postmodern art compared to art that really follows the kind of Jungian monomyth. So if you look at like waiting for Godot, where there's just two guys waiting for, you know, a, a, you know, metaphor for God and nothing happens, you know, that was my <laughs> postmodernism was through, because I studied English literature, it was through stuff that was really crappy to read, you know, and what Peterson is doing is, is kind of moving away from that as a, I think a cultural reference point to no, it's Lord of the Rings and you're Frodo. You know, it's, it's that kind of mythic journey. And I think to a degree, that's perhaps why it appeals to men and young men in particular who feel directionless. That'd be an interesting thing to get your perspective on of this, this appeal to the masculine that Peterson has. Oh, yes. No, it's beautiful. And, um, and it's a palliative to a, a world, particularly in academia and certain aspects of the culture that have become, uh, you know, feminized in a way that's, you know, pernicious, too, too much. Uh, and so, you know, this whole group of young men feel, you know, th there's no meaning. There's, there's, there's you know, religion, the, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, toxic masculinity, you know, I, I, I have all this privilege. It sure as hell doesn't feel like it, but I guess I do. Uh, no, 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 no. We're here, you know, we're here... Uh, this precious human life. I mean, good God, we're, we, we're the creations of almighty God somehow. Here we are. And we're here for a reason. And one of the things that, you know, we want to bring forward into integral, into an integral sensibility, is what we left behind when we moved into modernity, which is a world that is dripping with meaning. You know? where everything matters, you know, who you meet, who you talk to, whether or not you made your bed, what thoughts you're thinking, you know, that's all part of this heroic journey. And every person you meet is a little Frodo or a little somebody who has something for you. You know, you can sort of have that as a practice to say, what does that person have for me? What do I have for them? You know, and as I move through this amazing journey that, um, you know, it's tragic, it's comic, 
it's you know all of humanity what the fuck are we doing here i mean this, you know, this is really yeah this is absolutely fascinating this was something that came to me on the plane on the way over to interview peterson was i've, I've made a few documentaries about isis and i've always felt what a seductive world you that is to go from being I don't know, someone kind of working in a shop somewhere to on the front lines of the struggle for your civilization. And then it struck me that what Peterson is doing through the, the, the wider mythological work and framing it within this kind of theological framework is making your life as meaningful as that. That every single thing you do is taking the world either closer to or further away from hell. And it's, it's essential. It seems to me absolutely essential if we're going to kind of struggle against those kind of very seductive worldviews that we need something like this. Yes. Yes. No, it's so true. And, and you I know, guess God... That's what you mean by the cosmocentric as well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And we could see it in play. You know, I mean, something came out of nothing. <laughs> uh, and it's us. You know, good Lord. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, the, the, we, we want to, you know, when we talk about the three big stages that are online, there's actually three stages that we identify that are previous to that. And those are the worlds of like tribal magic and, uh, and, and great myth. And we, we want those back online too. You know, we want to see that the world you know, that nature is enchanted. And I love that about Jordan Peterson. He has this sort of Native you know, American practice that he does with his sort of community that I think is really helps round out. Uh, the guy you had on the end of your documentary, David, the, the guy- yeah, Jordan Greenhall. Yes. My goodness gracious, what an integral transmission about, you know, taking it back down to zero and nature and communication and contact with other human beings. And yes, 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 yes. That is, that, that's where we're going. And that's where modernity gets stuck because modernity, you know, has to get rid of all of the superstition, all of the magic, all of the myth. That's its job. It reduces everything to the exteriors, to what's measurable. It has no, you know, uh, 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 use for meaning or any of that kind of stuff. And so for a lot of people, they think that the only way to re-enchant to re my life or to enchant my life is to go back to some sort of a mythic religion. Hmm. And... Uh, and then a lot of people can't do that. You know, you just can't uncook that egg. You know what I mean? And so a lot of people who are, have a modern sensibility can't go back to a mythic meaning making system. And what they need to know is that we can go forward to a meaning making system that re-enchants the world in a way that science not only doesn't have a problem, but that fucking delivers it to us. It's so fascinating. We, David and I have been talking recently about um, Terence McKenna, who is one of my favorite thinkers. And, you know, he, he had a book called The Archaic Revival. And that really, you know, it's, it's that idea, really. It's that kind of re-enchantment and it's taking the archaic, but not going back, but saying yes and, yes. and integrating it into. It's, it's so essential. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. And, you know, I think Jordan Peterson is doing his part, you know, in, in a way that looks like a Sam Harris, another a hero of mine, in a way, you know, Steven Pinker, another hero of mine, uh, Jonathan Haidt, uh, another, you know, there's, there's some great public intellectuals. Uh, I have critiques of all of them in a certain way. But one of the things that Jordan Peterson is bringing to the party is, you know, a certain kind of magic, mm. yeah, you know. And meaning, yeah. meaning. Yeah, he he is telling, for, for me at least, my, my feeling of him when I first encountered his thought is that he is telling the, the deep story of Western culture better than anyone I've ever seen. Yes. And, and doing it from a very deeply embodied place. And this is, I mean, I found, I guess I found out about him last July, last June or July. And then immediately kind of went over and interviewed him fairly soon afterwards. And I was convinced, I, I knew as soon as I found him, this was the right voice for the times, that he was 
and nothing that's happened since in terms of his kind of rocketing to fame has surprised me in any any way whatsoever it was so clear that this was an essential voice for right now and and is is kind of you could look at it as slightly scary as well it's like we've lost sight of things to this point that we are so thirsty for it that we need this kind of transmission right now and i think it's a sign of how far we've strayed from these eternal truths that that he has become so famous in such a short amount of time. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I would say is, I agree with all of that, I would just say that the straying also was fruitful. And oh. that, you know, you know there's, there's, there's something about that, um, you know, one of the markers of the postmodern view particularly is people are depressed. You know, we're living in this ever darkening world. And, you know, that, that, that uh, one of the things I loved about Jordan Peterson is he, I, you know, there's a million of these little YouTubes and stuff, and I have, don't pretend to have seen them all, but th he did this one on the beauty of high functioning depression that I thought was just fantastic, you know, and, and, and it, um, you know, sort of even gives meaning to that. And uh, so, you know, the, 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 world, the, the Lord works in mysterious ways. And we, we you know, it's a messy progress, process. This. I, I often say evolution is beautiful, but not pretty. And, uh, you know, you look at human history and you can see that. Yeah. So, so you know, I've, I totally resonate with that. And, you know, if I look at my own personal journey as an individual, you know, you go through a long, dark night of the soul very often in a spiritual journey. And during it, I, you know, you feel, you're in that a perspectival madness. It's horrible. After it, for me, I'm, you know, my, my feeling is I would never change that. It made me who I am. So what elements of this journey we've been on through postmodernity do you think we need to take into integral and what do we need to leave behind? <clears throat> well, we need to take into integral the sensitivity of, of postmodernity and, and of green. You know, that, that, that sort of sensitivity to all the people who have been left out of the previous stages. So we could say that, you know, traditionalism tends to divide the world between saints and sinners. Postmodernity says we want the sinners to, you know. Uh, modernity says winners and losers. Postmodernity says we want the losers too. And, and so, you know, the, we want to have uh, a, you know, equality. You know, it, it, it's, it's over you know they overdo it and it's you know all of that, that. sounds very christian to me Jeff. yeah it is yes this is, this is my theory about because this isn't really interesting it's like from a lot of kind of people talking about uh the the, the benefits of green it's like there's, there's a sort of idea that there was this this wave of egalitarianism that came in in the 60s and then we we had civil rights we had gay rights we had uh, women's liberation. I suspect, and I, I, I don't know, but I suspect Peterson might say, no, that's not a new thing that's come in. That's actually the natural consequence of the Christian idea of the innate value and divinity of every individual playing itself out on a wider level. And so you could actually trace that down a lot further than a, a new force that comes into play in the 60s. What do you yeah, think? Fair, fair enough. I mean, I, I, think that's, uh, I think that's a really legitimate point, for sure. I mean, Jesus, I mean, Jesus was green, you know, in terms <laughs> of this. But we could also see the stages of, of Christian, of, of, of the church, you know, and that uh, the, what, what we get a full blossoming of in postmodernity is that all of these, uh, all of the human dignities are bestowed on everybody. Not just my religion, not just my country, not just my people, my race, but everybody. And particularly the people who have been left behind. But you're right, it is the full fruition of the teachings of Jesus Christ. You're <laughs> absolutely right. But, but the, for the first time. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's actually... It also shows up the hypocrisy of the previous manifestation of some of these yeah, values. Yeah. The human, the, you know, how humans do it. I mean, we, 
it's it's amazing that you know people like the great saints and sages like Christ and Buddha, the people who have really magnetized people, are actually teach have their 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 teachings are from you know post integral stages of development, and there's something about their teachings and their transmission that is riveting to the rest of us. But we translate it into our own stage of development, and we use it to gouge each other's eyes out for you know a few other few thousand years until we finally really get it. Uh, but it is interesting how that works. Yeah, I think for for me, one of those most interesting things is what we've already covered is this, this reintroduction of the transcendent. You know, um, I, I think that's such a galvanizing. For I think it's why Star Wars is popular because it's got the Force. Without the Force, Star Wars would be just. I don't think it would have yeah. been successful, you know, and I've often thought that about Peterson and that that's the, the revival that needs to happen. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, I've he definitely, that. the force is definitely with him. <laughs> no doubt about moment. it. For the moment. Yeah. And, and, you know, may he, you know, one of the other things I would just say in, in, in favor of Jordan Peterson as a, you know, a cutting edge, you know, even, you know, I have my critiques about it, whatever, but he has a flexibility of mind uh, and a, um, a resistance to being put in boxes and a sense of I'm learning too, mm. you know, and a, a sense of provisional, you know, that, that there's a humility. Yes. Yes. Thank you. That uh, I think is remarkable uh, considering all his gifts. And so, you know, I'm a fan. Yeah, I guess that would be my only question is you, you've been quite sort of clear on where you you see him falling short or, or not or his blind spots. But you still started off this conversation by saying that you thought he was an integral thinker. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, this is part of the, the developmental schema, but, you know, we can we develop in certain lines of development. And, and one of them we talk about is sort of the leading line is cognition. That is, are we actually able to see different systems of thought? So there's one thing to see them. And then there's another thing to sort of install them in your sort of heart. And then there's another thing to really get down into your belly, hmm. you know. So I would say that, you know, I'm integral from the waist up on a good day. You know, I'd say Jordan Peterson is integral from the neck up on a good day. I don't know. Who knows? But th th that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I, I also think that he seems to have integrated or at least to be able to access red in a way that very few people in this culture are. And I think that's part of what gives him the performative aspect. Like he he has anger and the shadow at his at his call in a way that for sure. I think is quite intimidating as well for a lot of people. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. And that and that also is a marker of integral, is somebody who can access red without being, you know, just completely driven or contained by red. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but when we talk about red, we're talking about just sheer, sheer power, you know, the use of power. And so being willing to get into to the arena, being willing to have conflict, being willing to cut somebody's head off, being willing to have your own head cut off, you know, that kind of stuff. That's warrior. Today is a good day to die is, is, is sort of the, the, the marker of that redness. And yeah. we want to have that, you know, and he does. You're right. And that's one of the reasons that uh, he's, his followers are so passionate is that they, they, they want it. And this is evolutionarily potent. We what, you know, we fight our way forward. We also, the other F word, our way forward. Hmm. But we fight our way forward, too. And, uh, and so, you know, that he is a warrior. It's a, one of the things I talked about, I most admire him in my podcast, was that he's a fighter. Hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, you know, that's great. I think that's a, that's a core quality, actually, because, you know, to, to some degree, the Trump and Brexit phenomena are... A, um, a reaction against the hypocrisy of green for not integrating their red. It's this kind of like, you are not as inclusive as you think you are. You've got that anger in you. Like we're going to goad you and troll you until you show it. Yep. And I think that's a really interesting thing happening. Yeah, I do too. Mm. Yeah, that's well said. Yeah. 
I guess that was a big part of the, the Glitch in the Matrix documentary for me was this shadow of liberalism, this idea that liberalism is, there's a hypocrisy in liberalism because there is a tribalism. We are naturally tribal creatures. And until we accept and understand that, yeah, we're completely open, we're completely accepting, we are so tolerant, except for those people who don't think like we do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they know it doesn't make sense, does it? Yeah, no, it's true. Well, uh, we are the kind of creatures that don't make sense, so it kind of makes sense. Yeah. And, and I'm glad you like the, the glitch film as well. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's what I was going to say, actually, is that, that um, in terms of actual integral transmission, uh, I thought the glitch in the Matrix that you did is as integral as anything I've seen. The people that you interviewed, the way you presented it, um, it was, um, I was thrilled to see it. And I'm, I'm really interested in seeing, you know, more of your stuff. It's interesting that you say that, that Glitch was an integral transmission because at one point I wa we did actually record um, some integral stuff that I was toying with putting in and then in, in the end didn't but it was a real influence on the construction of it and, and was yeah, a, a, a big sort of invisible superstructure on what I was putting together. So it's interesting that you yeah. spotted it. Yeah. Well, if, if we're right, integral is not just you know, a theory, it's the next stage of human history unfolding. And so people are going to be thinking integrally whether they have ever read a Ken Wilber book or not. Mm. Yeah, and, and and we're seeing more and more of that, and uh, I boy, I definitely saw it in your in your documentary. Yeah, well, really great meeting you, David and Ali. Great meeting you as well. You, you too. Know. You too. Yeah, God, Godspeed, yeah. guys.